Hello, this is Sudhakar Maparthi. Today we're going to look at uh, life cycle of uh, an S3 object and how we can configure to manage that life cycle. Today, I haven't drawn the C1C2 diagram yet. I'm going to just talk about this a little bit and then I will pause, then I will draw and then re uh, record. Just uh, testing it out in a different way so that I could be more uh, uh, more clearer uh, while drawing these objects. All right, so lifecycle configuration elements basically tells S3 when to expire an object, when that object is uh, in versioning or not non-versioning mode. Uh, the bucket, if the bucket is uh, versioned, then the, all the objects put in there, they will uh, they will be maintaining the versioning. So we can tell S3 to manage. Why do we want to manage the life cycle? Because uh, after certain objects, after certain time, we want to move them to a different storage class, transition them to a different storage class, and then certain things we want to uh, expire them and etc. So this is all that. Okay, so I'm going to pause now and then draw and then come back. Let me see. Okay, I got my entities uh, or classes that we're going to describe and draw some arrows, the relationship among these. So we start uh, a life cycle configuration object. And then it has many rules based on which a S3 will filter the objects. I can have one or more rules. Okay, let me use a different color again. Five cycle. I can have many rules. And, uh, and each rule can specify a lot of filters and uh, or you can, okay, let's talk about filter. Filter, in the filter, I can specify a prefix saying that if, if uh, logs slash, for example, if this prefix matches, so what it is matching, the object keys. If uh, that matches, that object will be managed. And what uh, what the management uh, it is trying to do, you are trying to transition that into a storage class after certain expiration, uh, 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 after certain, expiration time that could be number of days so what this is telling me is i want to i want to filter based on some prefix and if that time uh, passes and it expires then i want to transition that object from the current storage class to a new storage class. That's all. Now, rest of the everything else is different combinations and different values and all that. So at the highest level, this is it. And now here, when you say object size greater than and object size less than, under this rule, now I'm going to use my invisible pen. So when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing this, so I'm specifying a range of an object size based on object size. I want to filter. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, you know I, I should I should connect from filtering. All right. So that's the correct way to do it. Okay. So that uh, filter will be applied, and then all those objects that uh, match within that size will be picked and then transitioned to that storage class. 
So when I transition to a, another storage class, I will from standard to other storage class, Glacier. Uh, then I will I will get a, a lesser bill. You know, so I can specify three hundred after three hundred and sixty five days after one year I want to move them to a different storage class. Then sometimes I want to combine some prefix and also based on tags also I can filter. So at that point, if I want to do, then I want to apply an end filter. So all this will be basically, all this is an, kind of an XML uh, where I would use these elements and then provide that, uh, that XML uh, to S3 and it will manage that life cycle. So if I want to combine, so simple, you know, it has to have this prefix and it has to have this tag and so that in, in those cases, I can simply apply an end filter. So I want to say, use this tag and then this prefix. I can also use from here also, you know, if you, uh, uh, this, um, if this filter doesn't have, if it doesn't have a and thing, then you just use the filter. Otherwise you use an and element and then put the uh, filter. I'm just differentiating filter Simple filters and and filters for a conceptual understanding. And then, uh, and you already know that every tag should have a key and value. So no big deal there. So I just redraw storage class here also on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side, just to indicate that I can, uh, if I have to uh, have uh, some objects. Uh, um, some objects pointing to this storage class, let's say. It means it's the same thing, you know, basically, instead of connecting here, I'm just connecting it just for visual purposes. So logically separated, but, you know, physically under the hood, you know, it's the same storage class, okay. All right, so, so you specify a bunch of rules and you filter the objects and you manage. And then if it is versioned, the bucket is versioned, the objects will get versioned. So if the objects get versioned, these rules, uh, whatever you're specifying, will have a slightly, you know, slightly different behavior. So when you when you when when it expires, if it is not versioned, it will be it will be deleted. But if it is versioned, what it will do, it will take the current version and then may mark it as uh, mark it for as deleted. You know, is is ob is expired object delete marker. So uh, I didn't draw that uh, circle. So let me draw that circle. And it is called is object is expired object is expired object delete marker. So basically it will designate that version one because you know if it is version you have non uh, one object has other previous versions. So when you say expire, what do you what it wants to do? It it cannot delete the current version unless all the previous versions are deleted. So it, it, it has as an architect, when I'm designing such a system, so my only choice is, okay, just mark it for deletion and make it unavailable. For all practical purposes, it is deleted, but under the hood, it is still there. So that's when this non-current version expiration concept comes in. And then you can specify it needs to expire. And then non-current versions can be expired after certain days. I can specify that. And uh, and then when that happens, uh, then I can also uh, expire uh, expire this is is object uh, object delete markers. Uh, I'm just overriding this here. Okay, like that. Okay. So here, that's that concept. Is is it true or false? Basically. All right, that's all it is, non-current versions and versions. Current versions and previous versions will be managed by simply telling 
in these rules and in the filters we will just mention how current versions should be managed how non current versions should be managed okay so you need to understand this transition storage class current those current and non current uh, versions so expiration can be mentioned in days and date etc so all those details can be found in the documentation and you can based on the situation you can configure them so you don't have to remember everything so so you can filter on tags you can filter on prefixes or you can combine them that's all or sizes on basis of size also you can filter Okay, that's all for today. Talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.